Welcome, Sandy. Thank you for having me. I, I, it was great to make your uh, documentary list, and uh, I'm glad to be here and answer some questions for you guys. And uh... Well, I have to say, you are one of those people that was on kind of my short list of people I wanted to get on the show. Um, okay. Because you're doing, the types of films you're doing, it's very different than most of the people I talk to. First of all, I talk to a lot of New York people. Okay. So, you know, they're making New York style films or, mm -hmm. you know, they're doing stuff that's just like, you know, five people in a room kind Street of thing. stuff. Yeah. 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 And, you know, you're making films with like monsters and aliens. And, you know, like for me growing up, uh, the if you wanted to make an indie film, your indie film was like, like Clerks, you know. And, which is brilliant, by the which way. Which is great. I'm a you know? huge fan. Huge uh, fan of that. Or, or like, you know, if you were more ambitious, maybe El Mariachi. You yeah, know? I, another one I love as well. I mean, I, I, I mean, how can you not like that movie? It's but great. it seemed like your idea of an independent film was like Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know? yeah little, 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 uh, little, little Conan in there, a little, uh, little it, Batman, little Superman. Little, it was a little more, you know, it, more uh, involved. <laughs> more invo involved is a good word. Yeah. So. You know, you started out uh, in special effects and you worked for some of the best in the business. I mean, you started out working for Stan Winston. I did. It was, you know, a legend, uh, made so many great, so many great movies. Yeah. Um, and then you work with, you know, amazing artists like Henry Alvarez and, and people My like that. My mentor for 20 um, years, yeah. And, uh, you know, and you yourself are a wonderful artist and, and the, the stuff you. that you're able to make is incredible. Thank you. Right. I've uh, I've been able to surround myself with a lot of talented people over the years, and that's a big, big reason of why I'm so successful. People like Henry and getting to work with Stan and Rick Baker and people like that, Steve Wang, you know, just people that have come, you know, through my life at different periods. And, you know, some of them I've been friends with since the beginning, you know, like a Steve Wang or somebody like that. You know, I mean, I think Steve... I mean, every, everything I've ever shot in LA, he's always come to the set. He's always been super supportive. Mm -hmm. He was there on dead end and helped a lot with, you know, giving me advice on the predators and stuff. And it, it was just awesome. I don't think there's a lot of people who can do what you do on the level that you're doing it with, you know, given the kind of constraints and limitations that people in the indie world have, mm -hmm. you know? So, uh, you know, like, I'm tr how do you do that? Like, how do you, you, cause you're, you're, I mean, are you funding things through Kickstarter and, and what, what's the, first of all, let me ask you about the process because mm -hmm. do, for instance, so for something like shallow water, which I really liked, okay. um, did it start with the creature design or did yes. it start with, it did. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cause most, most of what I do starts with drawings. I do a ton of conceptual art and drawings like production art and I pin all of that up in my studio around me and then I sit down and write. So I, everything starts as images with me. And as I'm drawing or doing maquettes, the story behind these characters are, is, is coming to me as I'm creating them. So it's not like I think about like, well, I wanna make an alien gladiator movie so let me do a bunch of like alien gladiator maquettes. It's like I sit down to draw or sculpt and I start making this stuff and then think, wow, ooh, well, well this, you know, or, you know, for like the shark hunter thing from, um, from shallow water, like that started as, as like a, you know, like you're thinking of prehistoric times and you want to do this, like kind of an homage, so to speak to creature from the black lagoon, but like way edgier. And then you start thinking like, wow, like, like, what did this thing do? Like, what, it, it, well, what if it hunted sharks? You know, what if it, I'll call it the shark hunter. And then it took place in Mexico. So Spanish for one who hunts sharks is La Tebronera. So that's what we call the creature. And it, it, things, it's, yeah, it's a great question because th things just somehow seem to naturally evolve with me. I, I, it's, I can't just do a sketch or a maquette, uh, or, or even a doodle. Like, it, it, it'll think, thoughts will immediately come to me of who that character is and what it does. And that's where the, the genesis of the stories come from, you know, and that's when I start writing. I, I think that's a key question because I, I think people are sometimes thrown off by that. They think, oh, 
they wanted to make this movie because they had like a cool toy they wanted to play with, mm -hmm. you know, as opposed to uh, here's a, an original design or here's inspiration from something, a character. Sure. And yeah. creating a story. It's like creating a story around a character kind of yeah. thing. Um, you know, like, like Billy Bob Thornton did when, when he made his first feature. Sure. Um, but like, you know, yours are just, you know, bigger and scarier kind of thing. Yeah, um, I mean, you know, they're, they're, it's, you know, it's a lot of work and, and it's, it's a balance because there's, I, I, like I said, I've been fortunate. I know a lot of talented people that have helped me do a lot of things for very little or sometimes no money. But the flip side to that coin is I do a lot of the work myself as well. You know, I'm in the creature shop sculpting. I, I, I write everything. Um, I work with DPs, but I do all my own storyboards and I pick every shot in everything I've ever filmed. Like I pick the lens, I pick the shutter speeds. I like, I'm, I, I'm a camera nerd. So like early in my career, when I got to be on set with Spielberg or I was on set with Don Jackson or whoever it was, the first person that I would talk to is I'd make friends with the DP. You know, how do you load the magazines? How do you do this? How do you... You know, like, what's the difference between a 10 millimeter lens and a 150 millimeter lens? Or, you know, what does a zoom lens do that a prime lens doesn't? You know, things that, I, my opinion, I think filmmakers today don't know. And they're very basic things like screen direction, like, you know, just basic stuff like that, I think, has gotten lost because people are so enamored with all this technology. And it drives me crazy because the technology isn't what makes the movies. People make movies. And that's always been my motto. You know what I mean? It's like I, everything I've done, good, bad, or indifferent, is, is mine. I, I, if, if it's bad or people don't like it, I, I never point to someone else and go, oh, I, I, you know, that was a, a crappy script. Or I, I wrote the script. You know what I mean? Or, oh, I didn't have enough lights. Or I didn't – I, I – agreed to go make the film with what I had and thought that I could do what I saw in my head on the screen. And as any filmmaker will tell you, it's varying degrees of success and results. Sometimes it's really good and you hit between, God, I don't know, 75, 80% of what you see in your head. Sometimes it's more in that 60% range. It depends. It depends on the crew. It depends on how much money you have. It depends on the burnout rate of the people around you. Cause I leave a string of bodies on every set that I've ever worked on. Um, I, you know, I'm just a very demanding guy, you know? And if, if you're going to sign on to do a movie with me, I, you, 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 you know what you're in for. You know, I mean, because I, I don't do easy, like you said, it's like, I don't make talking head movies. Right. Well, is there, a, is there a, a happy medium, though, or is there a place where, because in the process of making these films, now you're making these films for probably a tenth of what a studio would make them. You know, you're, you're making films that um, look like, you know, two million dollars when you, you're making them for two hundred thousand dollars or something. Mm -hmm. So do you think that that sort of thing would be easier or there would be maybe less casualties if you had bigger budgets to deal with? There would definitely be less casualties if there was more money because most of the casualties are a result of not having enough money hmm. and having to push people to do maybe more than, you know, than one job or in some cases more than two jobs. I mean, I've had, you know, my core, core group of people that I work with, we, we all wear three, four, five different hats. Yeah, I mean, you know, more money, more time uh, it will suppress that. But I don't, you know, I just, I just, making movies is hard, dude. I mean, it's not an easy thing to do. It's not. It, it, and, and, I, and I'll tell you something. There are a lot of effects guys who want to direct, who saw Dead End, who saw Steve Wang do Kung Fu Rascals and Guyver and every, and go, oh, well, I could do that. Where is it? Mm. Yeah, you shot it, but that's not making a movie, dude. You, you've got to take the thing from concept to distribution, 
whatever that distribution arm may be, if it's the web or whatever, you, you've got to deliver the film. So there's a lot of people that, that think it's easier than it really is, and it's not. It's hard. I've done it enough to know. I've, like I said, I've directed a ton of commercials, music videos, all the shorts. I made the feature. I've done documentaries. It's like, I, it's, I've, I'm not saying everything I've done has been amazing. I'm just saying I've done a lot of stuff. And I've, I've gained a lot of experience. And I know what it takes to achieve the level of excellence that I desire in my work. Let me ask you this question. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think it hopefully is a different time, but maybe it'll translate. Because mm -hmm. I always ask people who have experience, like what, what advice they would give. But mm -hmm. if doing what you want to do and at the level that you're doing it, if you, Sandy, now could go back and talk to Sandy when you first started out, mm. what would you say to yourself? Or what would you say to somebody who's like, oh, you know what? I want to make... I want to make movies like this. I want to make movies on a high level. I want to make the next Star Wars. I want to make the next yeah. Alien or something like that. Well, that's a two-part answer. Um, I would tell young Sandy to be less egotistical and be more collaborative um, and be less abrasive, but not less aggressive. Um, because I think that aggression and that, that drive is what got those projects done eventually. Um, the second part of the answer is know what you're getting into. Um, I think a lot of people get out of film school uh, or these effects schools and think that they're going to come out into a world that's like 1985. And it's not 1985 anymore. And there aren't a lot of movies that require creature suits or prosthetic makeups or specialty costumes. I mean, there are, there are, but the competition is so fierce because of, of the amount of work that's there as opposed to the amount of people that want to do it. I think you see a lot of fallout. And I think you see a lot of very disenchanted and very disappointed young people because they don't know how hard it is. Um, you know, I, I mean, again, this, uh, this is 20 years I'm going on doing this. Batman Dead End was 17 years ago. I mean, and it's still relevant to, as today as it, as it was back then. It's more relevant. But the thing is, is that you, people still are, are like, well, you know, you're, you're, you know, you're old school. Like, you don't, you know, you don't, you don't shoot on this or you don't do that. Or you, you know, you're not a YouTube guy. You know, you're, you know, you, it's like, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a perfect example. I can't tell you what studio it was, but they've made movies you've seen. I guarantee it. They called me up when they saw Shallow Water. You know what the first thing they asked me was? This is no word of lie. How many views did it get on YouTube? And I said, it's not even on YouTube yet. What, I, what is that difference does that make? And they're like, well, you know, that's, that's how we judge the demographics and the da, 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 da. It's, it's like, get me out of here. Like, I just, you know, it, it's like, I just, I want to... I'll tell you something that, again, I, it's, I, I, I feel like a jerk even saying this because I, I can't tell you who it was, but somebody, a, a big dude in the industry told me, he says, Sandy, you know what your problem is? And I said, what? He says, you want to make movies and they want to make money. And I said, well, I think that's a good problem to have. I, you know, I mean, I, it's hard to say. But aren't, would your movies not make money? I mean, that, that's what I don't get because I saw Shallow Water and I, I told you before we rolled, it scared the bejesus out of me. And mm -hmm. I thought, you know, nobody's doing this now. This is so, it, and you know, in, the, you, in that movie particularly, you see the creature in the daytime. Uh, the design is true. It's bold. It's, people don't do that. It's, everything's in the dark, shadowy, yeah. 
seen it a million freaking times. Yeah, and the you know the thing I liked about it too is that you know you you um it's just different. Like it's not what we're used to seeing. And I'll tell you why. You know why it's different? Because every single person that makes those kind of movies or is or or is involved in that end of the industry will tell you, oh, you never show the creature. Never show it. Like what I go completely the other way. I will show you every freaking detail of that thing. Because I think that's what people want to see. In 1979, when Alien came out, Ridley had to shoot that movie the way he shot it because that suit sucked. It was awful. It's a brilliant design, but the suit itself was so badly done that all he could do was silhouette it, backlight it, little quick little quips, and it worked. And it's a brilliant film and it is a brilliant landmark monster, but there is no way you can put the quality of that suit up against Predator or Darkness or any of the stuff that came, you know, the, you know, the big creature suit movies. You know, it's just American Wolf in London. I mean, it's just not the same. It's just he had to do it that way. I'm not forced into that corner because my suits are made to be shown off so why not show it off i mean why does it have to be in the dark i i just don't agree with it uh it, it's i mean it's an interesting sort of quandary and, and it goes back to that old adage of people just doing things because that's the way they always did it you know and i i don't necessarily agree with that and i think I don't know. I, I, I liked it. I liked your other, I liked your feature as well. I liked Hunter Prey a lot because you, you feel, man. you feel the hand of a director. It's like somebody really. I, I, I sincerely appreciate that. And I, mm -hmm. I, I adore every person that recognizes that and appreciates it because um, it, it, it acknowledges what I've done and what my crew's done. Um, and, and I, I, I do not take those compliments lightly. So I appreciate that. Thank you. The other thing I would say too, is that, um, the the style and the way you frame things uh, that's also unusual because like if you look at Hunter Prey, it's not a steady cam whipping all over the place. You know, mm -hmm. it's solid, locked down on a tripod, people moving through the frame, and just beautiful like looking frames. That's John Ford. You know, yeah, that's John. And, that's the Searchers. That's. That's you know the man who shot Liberty Valance. That's you're you're, you know, you're I mean, making a western and with aliens, you know. There you go. Uh, uh, and so, anyway, I mean, I, I we're running out of time, but I wanted to get onto your future project. So, mm -hmm. with, you know, with that advice, I know that you have a project that mm -hmm. you're starting uh, this year. Yeah, that it's a big, big, very big project. Um, I wrote a story I did that end called The Circle. Uh, it's an alien gladiator movie. Picture uh, Ridley Scott's Gladiator meets Star Wars. Uh, and I am doing, I am going to crowdfund uh, a graphic novel. And I'm going to tell my story uh, in, a, in a book. Uh, but the format is going to be very different than your normal graphic novel. I am going to use different mixed media techniques and do something that's never been done before. So um, I am building uh, sets, I am doing makeups, I am working, uh, I'm sort of in pre-production on it. I, I've, I'm using my own money, but I'm gonna launch um, a Kickstarter campaign once this COVID thing has sort of run its course. Uh, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this book. Um, and that's gonna be, that'll take me into, into next year, you know? So it's gonna be a lot of work, but y you know, it, it, it was just born of the fact of, you know, I, I come into my studio every day and I look on the shelf and there's all these maquettes from all these movies I've pitched and all these scripts. And it's like, you know what? I'm 51 years old. I may not get to make these movies ever. So I have to tell my stories. So I'm gonna start making graphic novels. You'll probably get people wanting to option the graphic novel before you get the that's not the, why i'm doing it you know, but i that's happened before you know, so I, um, I i know people that's happened too they want they wrote a, a television series 
they pitched it. It didn't go, but then they wrote a book and the book was a bestseller mm -hmm. and they, people wound up optioning the of book. Of course, of course, you know, of course you know, they did. People were, people were calling the studios. They, the studios were calling her instead of the opposite. Um, and because, then have, because, because there's no risk there. Right. There's no risk. They already know it's popular. They already know like, oh, you know, it's a, it's a bestseller. Oh, people will go see that. Right. You know, uh, Jaws was a bestseller. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, you know, I mean, I'm not saying that like Steven Spielberg was handed a career, but I mean, Sid Sheinberg took him under his wing back then. And, you know, I mean, what had he done before that? He did a TV movie called Duel, which is basically Jaws with a truck. So, I mean, I, you know, again, it's like, I, I, I'm not comparing myself to him. I'm just saying I was, I was born too late. You know, I, I just think that if I was a guy coming up with Milius, with Lucas, with Spielberg, with Cameron, maybe I could have ridden that train with them. Maybe. It, it, it's a big maybe. But, I mean, I, I just think that, those are the kinds of films I like. So those are the kind of stories I like to tell. We talked about advice before. Mm -hmm. You're actually, you have another project where you're, uh, you're going to teach creature design and things like that. Yeah, it's, uh, that Kickstarter is actually going to launch before the book one. It's, it's kind of a little quickie that I want to do. Um, I get a lot of correspondence from children um, and from parents that want to give their kids the, the creature making experience. So I'm gonna do a series of how-to videos. It's called Making Your Own Monster. And uh, it, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give kids instructional videos that they can download. And you get a kit with a little resin skull with a little base and you get the clay and you get all the little tools and you watch the video and you can make your own monster. So, um, and that's something that I'm doing. It's more of like a nonprofit thing. I mean, it's not really to make money, it's just to, it's just to give to the kids because I, I've, you know, I love working with children. I love teaching. Um, if people can, you know, you know, put up with me, um, it, you know, I, I, I think I have a lot of, you know, information that I could put across to uh, young people. So I, I enjoy that. That sounds very cool. I, you know, when I was a kid, I wish there were stuff like that. I was obsessed with like, yeah, I would have ate it up. Yeah. I, I was obsessed with Dick Smith when I was a kid, you know, you like one uh, of the greats. Yeah, and, and he was very given. I think all the great artists, they're, they're also teachers. And, and Stan, Stan Winston always told me uh, a big part of being a professional is, 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 is teaching and educating. And that's what his son, Matt, has taken up with the Stan Winston School, which I've done a couple of videos for. Um, and, you know, I mean, it's, it, that's, yeah. I mean, once you reach a certain stage of development in your career and people are, you know, putting a certain value on your work. I think it's important to do that. Fantastic. Um, so I appreciate you doing this interview. I appreciate you being so sure, honest. Uh, yeah. If people want to know more about you or uh, learn about your projects, where can they find you on the web? Uh, Facebook, just Sandy Calora. And uh, I've got an Etsy store too. It's called Creature Arts Studio. Well, thanks so much, Sandy. Um, and, you. Uh, you know, Keep us posted. Let us know. We'll have I you on the show will. again. I, you know? I absolutely will. I absolutely will. Maybe we could do something uh, for the promotion for the Kickstarter of uh, The Circle. That would be cool. That would be um, very cool. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate thanks. it. Thanks.